All right, turn to 2 Timothy chapter number 4, 2 Timothy chapter number 4, and God laid this message in our heart last night when uh, before uh, we left the service, the way uh, things uh, transpired there toward the end of the service, and God spoke to my heart, I settled uh, before we went out the door last night. And uh, God knows I always try to pray that uh, the Holy Ghost would arrange the atmosphere of the service. And, uh, you know, the Bible does say that the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. Amen. One man said this, we may get tired in the way, but don't ever get tired of the way. And I'll be honest with you, I'm 57 years old and I can't do what I used to. Amen. And I'll tell you, I'm, uh, you know, I, I look forward to going to bed every night. Somebody say Amen. Well, you know, in the Lord's wisdom, Brother Ray, Brother Doug, he made it like that. You know, if we could be born and stay babies all the time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, God didn't make us to be born old and go back to be zero, uh, but he made us to be babies and get older. And things began to break down and deteriorate. And uh, remember my grandma, my mama's mama, would help raise us. She was on a breathing machine, had colon cancer before she died, and had her hands tied so she wouldn't pull that machine out of her throat. And I remember her taking her little old finger and lifting it up. And I thought she was pointing, you know, to the TV or the monitor. But I'm going to tell you what, she was pointing to something I couldn't see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm glad, amen, there's a better day coming. Yeah. And I'm glad heaven's waiting on us. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that, amen. And I appreciate the good singing, appreciate what God's done for us. Thank the church for all they've done for us, the rooms, and getting to meet this dear preacher and his family. It's a blessing to meet new people. And I like that. Amen. God's laid this in our heart. And I want to begin reading verse number one, very familiar scripture, but don't let that, uh, you know, hinder you at all. Paul said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Now, I used to preach that, amen, that, uh, or used to say instant in season and out of season, but it says be instant in season, out of season. That means, Brother Doug, preach when they like it and preach when they don't like it. Sometimes preaching ain't in season. Amen. Reprove. People don't like that. Rebuke. Flesh don't like that. Exhort. That's what we like, amen, with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, and I want to say it has come, when people, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be, we sh and shall be turned unto fables. Brother Davey Sheldon told me this one time, we're living in the time we're living in, we're born for such a time as this. He said we're victims of prophecy. But watch thou in all things, aged preacher, talking to this young preacher, he said, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. And I want us to focus in on verse number seven. I was reading this a good while back, and God give us a little old thought here. Paul said, I have fought a good fight, Notice these next words. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Yes. Now I want to preach to you this night out of that middle sentence where he says, I have finished my course. And I want to preach to you with this thought in mind on when are we going to decide to finish? Wow. When are we going to decide to finish? Hey Amen. I've seen a lot of people get started I've seen them get started. I've seen preachers. I've seen Christians. Amen, Lawrence. I, I've seen people get started, but I've seen them get tripped up. Yeah. I've seen them, amen, get into a ditch. I've seen the adversary, and I've seen the flesh, and I've seen clear, amen, things that uh, sidetrack people yeah. and get them mixed up, amen, and uh, really get them off the path. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, friend, uh, we need to finish. And I thought about this. I wrote this down uh, some while back. Back when I was in, the, uh, in school in the 70s, and uh, they used to have a real simple grading scale. Uh, the teachers, you know, back then, hey, man, I went to school. I didn't go to learn. I went to, you know what I'm saying, for recess and the girls. Somebody say amen. And, uh, you, you know, but back then, the teachers, Brother Phil, they, they had a real simple grading plan. 
Amen. They, you, they had A for excellent. Yeah, I never did acquire that. Amen. I never was on the A-B honor roll. Somebody say amen. Yeah, y'all hear me preach. You know why I'm not. Amen. And then B, they called B, Brother Doug was above average. And I, I never, I, I made of one or two B's, amen, not many. <laughs> and that wasn't the teacher's fault. That was, that was my fault. Amen. And uh, then C, C was average. Well, I made a lot of C's. Average. Then D, I did make a lot of D's. D is below average. Then F was failing. F was failing, amen. Boy, I never did like at the end of the semester. I never did enjoy, Lawrence, taking my report card home to mom and daddy. <laughs> Back then, they, used to, they didn't have all this electronic stuff. You had to take your report card home to mom and daddy and have them sign it. A lot of times, Miss Tammy, we you know we'd fake it. Somebody say amen. We we fake their signature, amen, and sign it. You know why? Because we didn't study, and amen, we didn't apply ourselves, and we knew that if we didn't make the right grade that our parents wanted us to make, amen, uh, they would light you up. And back when I was in school, hey. Back in, and when I was in school, amen, they'd take you to the office. They'd bend you over the desk, amen. They'd paddle your rear, rear end. Now, I don't say this. We need more of that today. You wouldn't have all this stealing going on, all these kids, amen, on dope and everything going on. I don't tell you, back then, they'd call you the principal's office, Thad. And I'll tell you, if the principal, he'd pull that paddle out. Bob, it had drilled holes in it about that big. He'd bend you over, say, take your billfold out. He'd raise you up about three times. And I'll tell you, when he did, hey, the guidance counselor would call home. And beloved, when you got home, thank God you got another one. Then the last grade, they sometimes you get that U. That's unsatisfactory. Well, I want you to I want you to ask yourself in your Christian life, where are you at on that grade scale? If you had to give yourself a grade tonight, boy, it grieved my heart last night when the preacher, uh, I don't even know who raised her hand, but multitudes raised her hand when he had everybody bow their head. He said, if there's something between you and the Lord or you ain't where you're supposed to be, I don't know, a bunch of people raised their hand. And I told the preacher, I said, boy, it's amazing. Folks raised their hand, but they did not, nobody moved to get anything done about that. Now, we're trying to have revival. We're not up here. Y'all didn't come for nothing and didn't prepare for nothing. Hey, the preachers and the singers, they didn't come for nothing. Hey, we up here trying to accomplish something eternal for God. And boy, trying to see God do something in the church. Amen. Don't say this. I'm afraid on our scale, on our grading scale spiritually, amen, I'm afraid many of us are just average. Most people you could put Amen, or just average Christians. One man said this, amen, he said when you're, when you're average, you're just as close to the bottom as you are the top. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. Amen. Amen. Old Vance Abner, I like him, amen. He said this, he said most Christians are so subnormal that if we were to become normal, people would think we're abnormal. Amen or not? I mean, we can't get excited no more. I mean, boy, I'm going to tell you, folks, listen, it looks like salvation kills most of us. Amen. We can't get excited about the Lord. Hey, we get excited over temporal things and carnal things. Amen. Hey, we get excited about everything else, but we come to church. Amen. Hey, we can't say amen. We can't shout. We can't throw our hands up. Amen. There'll be things that will cloud us spiritually. Amen. That'll be in our heart and our mind. Hey, something has happened to us. Maybe the enemy shot a fiery dart at you. Amen. Boy, you didn't get that thing taken care of, and we bring that thing into the house of God, and we can't not finish the work that God wants us to do, amen, is because we've let the enemy beat us over the head. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Notice this in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse number 3. An older preacher talking to a young preacher. Let me just read verses 1 through 3 of chapter 2. He said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Look at verse 3. He said, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we got way too many sissy Christians. I don't tell you, people, they'll fall out of church. Clint, they'll, they'll quit church. They'll turn their back on God, amen. I mean, they'll walk out on God, Brother Phil, if somebody don't look at them right. But if the preacher, Brother Ray, don't shake their hand, I'll tell you, if they see something, amen, on social media, I mean, I despise it. I've had people, amen, get their feelings hurt over stuff like that. Hey, Paul told Timothy, he said, endure hardness, amen. Say, so, preacher, what does that mean? Hey, everything ain't always going to go the way you want it to go. Every day, amen, ain't going to be a red letter day. Amen, things ain't always going to go the way you think you ought to go at church. Preacher ain't always going to do what you want him to do. I've been married 35 years. I'll tell you, me and my wife's had issues. <laughs> Things ain't always went the way I want them to go. You say, what'd you do? Did you leave her, divorce her? No, I'm still with her. I'm planning on hanging in there until she, hey man, we go to the dropping off place. <laughs> I'm talking about people don't finish no more. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, a little, a little conflict to come up in their life. There'll be a little battle come up in their life. Amen. Hey, the first thing they'll do is quit on God. You know what Jesus said in Luke 9, 62? He said, And no man, having put his hands a plow and looketh back, is fit for the kingdom of heaven. We've got too many Christians, amen, that's looking back. They're looking at their past. They, they worried about what somebody done or somebody said to them or hurt their feelings, amen. Well, hey, just get in line. <laughs> I've had my feelings hurt so many times, amen, I don't even have feelings no more. <laughs> preacher, I mean, you got to endure hardness. You can't be no wimp be a preacher. I mean, about every week your feelings going to get hurt. Amen, I've had them not show up. Had 25-year anniversary at church. I've had people not show up knowing they could have and didn't. You say, well, you know, I just kept on preaching. Yeah, right. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen, people be sick, preacher. You know what you buy pastor for in the hospital. They expect you to be there. Hey, you go and kill yourself, spend time away from your wife and family. Hey, one of your loved ones will be sick or I'll be sick, my wife be sick. Hardly nobody will show up. You say, what you going to do? You're going to endure hardness. Just keep on going. Yeah, right. hey, Amen. Listen, don't be surprised by conflict. We ought to expect conflict. Yeah. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 10. Paul said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Amen. Look at verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. Some we live in a day, amen. I mean, persecution, it's just a norm, it's the norm of the church, amen, for the true church. Amen. If you ain't going to be no lollygag Christian, amen, hey, you live right on your job, you're going to be talked about, amen, they're going to ridicule you. You try to have some standards, amen, dress about halfway right, do right, amen. I mean, don't walk around and listen to a bunch of filthy talk and cussing, amen, it goes on on the job. 
I tell you, I'm amazed, brother, at the people on the job. They, they say they're Christians, amen. And friend, they'll they'll light right in with those people on the job, Miss Brittany. You couldn't tell them apart. And then when they come to church, they want you to think they're the best Christian since sliced bread. I just had a man before I come up here. I told the preacher this. My daughter's needing a van. Holly and trying to help her get a van and had a man told me he was a Christian went to his house me and Holly went to his house and had a little Honda Odyssey had a bunch of miles had some work done on it and I was going to buy it and we drove it and called him back and he said he still had the van and uh, you know I, my daddy amen he told me he said don't you ever give the first price for anything you buy <laughs> I like the Jew people somebody say amen yeah. Make you feel like you're getting a little deal. You know what I'm saying? If you save 200 or 300, amen. You can buy a lot of gas, $300. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and Brother Doug, I chewed him down a little bit, you know, and, and he stayed there online. He didn't get it for a while. And he, he, he called me back and he said, Well, he said, I'll take this for the van. I said, Well, we'll come over Thursday and we'll come pick it up. Well, Holly came up the house, walking in the door, and the man called me on my phone. He said, I hate to tell you this. He said, But I've sold that van. I said, sir, I said, me and you had a verbal agreement. What are you talking about, son, the devil rising up in you? One man said, you better be careful about trying to get the devil out of other people. You'll get him in you. Boy, I wanted to light on him on the phone, told me, I told him I was a preacher, and he told me he was a Christian, amen. Used to, you know, you could shake people's hand. Now you have to go through Jordan and the law firm, amen, have 10,000 pieces of paper drawn up and signed. You know why? Because people, their word's no good no more. Amen. Boy, expect, expect persecution. Expect heartache, amen. Hey, when, you, when you're trying to finish your job for God, amen, endurance is a determination of the will and spirit and not many people possess that in our day. I want to tell you, the Christian life is not a 50-yard dash, it's a life lived. Paul stayed faithful to the end. You read the life of Paul after he got saved in Acts chapter 9. I want to tell you, he burned the bridge, friend. He never looked back. He didn't go set up in a motel somewhere, live lavishly, amen. I'll tell you, that man suffered. He suffered, amen, everywhere he went. He was beaten, amen, mocked on, run out of town. Everything he'd done, it was for the glory of God. He said, I count all things but dung that I may win Christ, amen. When, whenever duty becomes delight, you're always more efficient. Drudgery is opportunity with the heart taken out of it. Wow. Y'all hearing me tonight, amen? Yes. I want to say this. One man said this, Brother Clint. He said, if your heart ain't in it, God ain't going to be in it either. Right. Right. You ever see people be married for a little while? And then, you know, boy, they love each other, amen. I tell them young people at church, Brother Doug, love is not an emotion, it's a commitment. Right. Good. Right. Good. Good. Your emotions are going to change. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Amen. Good. I tell you, you see people, they married for a while, and boy, they, you think lovey-dovey, boy, they lovey-dovey, sure enough, amen. Hey, you let something happen, you know, let the lady start putting on a few pounds, somebody say amen. Y'all help me, Amen. Let things start happening. You know what I'm saying? Well, I just don't love her no more. Well, why'd you marry her? I mean, I love my wife. Amen. Hey, me and hers both changed in 35 years. <laughs> she might be watching this on the internet. I better be careful. She done got on me one time. Amen. <laughs> you still look pretty, baby. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I mean, things has changed on both our ends. Somebody say amen. I mean, things are changed. But listen, hey, I'm not going. I'm not going to turn my back on her. She's going to have surgery Friday. I'm not going to leave her. I'm going to leave Thursday night and drive six, seven hours so I can be there Thursday, Friday morning at eight thirty. Amen. Hey, God, give her to me. She's my wife. She's part of me. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew eighteen, two become as one flesh. 
Boy, endure hardness, amen. They don't say this. Sometimes we've got to endure some headaches. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, look at verse number 9. Paul said, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Verse 10, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. People don't want to suffer no more. I mean, none of us, but we don't like suffering. I mean, air conditioning, go out in the car, we won't get the air conditioning fixed, we won't trade the car. Hey, it's a whole lot easier, amen, buy an AC compressor than it is buy a new car. Somebody say amen. I mean, get that 460 air going, just roll down the window. Somebody say amen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, used to them old timers, they suffered. They suffered. They put up a lot. They didn't even have air conditioning. They didn't have padded pews and air-conditioned church. Amen. Hey, they'd come to church and stand outside with the windows raised here in the preacher. Amen. I'll tell you, if everything ain't perfect, Thad, Tammy inside the church, I mean, people won't show up. Right. Amen. I had a man years ago down there at Victory, and I, I tell you, it's got me upset, and bless the heart, he's in heaven. But he's sitting there, and he come to me one morning, and you know, you got all kind of different people in the church, and we had their own 72, and they, they was something doing like this, and some was doing like that, you know. I said, boy, wouldn't it be a blessing if you could walk into church one time, and everybody said, boy, it feels perfect in here. I'd drop dead with a heart attack, amen. And this man, Brother Doug, he, he come in, he come over to me, and I mean, on Sunday morning, I, was, I had that burden, you know what it is about preaching, I had that burden on me. He walked up to me to my face, brother, he said, listen, preacher, he said, if you don't cut the heat on in here, he said, me and my wife's going home. Well, how do you think that's going to make you feel right before you preach? Yeah. What, what's that going to do for a preacher? That knocked the enthusiasm out of anybody. Yeah. Boy, we got to endure headaches. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Trouble's a part of our daily life. Yeah. Job 14, 1. Man that's born of a woman is of what? Few days and full of trouble. Yeah. Some of y'all, if y'all have had trouble today, yeah. I can see it on your faces. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've had trouble. Oh, Lawrence, he had trouble at night. Couldn't even get in his house. Had to sleep outside in the car. Hey, Amen. That's just the devil trying to defeat him. Amen. No to have revival, trying to kill his spirit so he can't worship. The sink stopped up. We got a plumber in here. Amen. Raise anybody got a plumber. Amen. But you know what? Listen, trouble is a part of the Christian life. Now I want to say this. Now listen to me. Listen to this. Trouble is not determined mostly by actions, but by affiliation. Amen. Look what he said there in verse number uh, 12 of 2 Timothy 3. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecutions. You can mark off most Christians from that list. Oh, you say, boy, I don't have no trouble with the devil. I don't have no trouble with the devil at my house. You know why, amen? You're shaking hands with him. Got living godly. That's why you don't never have no trouble. Nothing ever goes wrong. I like that thing, Doug. I went in your office right there before church, and Randy let me in. I put my shirt. I like that little old mouse trap you had, amen, to talk about people complains and push the red button. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I like I like it, amen. I'm going to tell you, most Christians today don't live a godly life. What if, what if they could lock you up for being a Christian? Is there enough evidence in your life that the police could lock you up for being a Christian? They could arrest you for being a Christian, Brother Phil, amen. Could they have enough evidence, amen, in your house, in your car, and in your life to lock you up for being a Christian? That's why people's not finishing. 
They got a divided heart. Amen. Amen. They've got a divided heart. Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 30, he said, you either gather with me or you scatter abroad. Right, right. You either gather or scatter, amen. Now turn to Revelation chapter 3, and I may not get all this preached and this will be all right, but Revelation chapter 3, now I want to say this to you, friend, God knows all about us. Look at Revelation chapter number 3, and we're going to read, amen, a few verses here, beginning with verse number 13. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I Now God's talking here to his church. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, friend, they, there's a lot of lukewarm Christians. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. You say, what is that, preacher? They're neither cold and they're neither hot. I got a message I preach on this, amen, on the church that made God sick. Wow. There's a lot of churches and Christians are making God sick. Hey, I don't, don't give me no hot milk and don't give me no cold coffee. I get my coffee, amen. At home, I'll take it out of the pot. When I pour it, I put it in the microwave and nuke it on 22 seconds. I don't want no cold coffee. Don't give me no hot milk, amen. Well, can you imagine our lukewarmness and our apathy? and our unwillingness to, amen, to raise our hands and say we're not where we ought to be, but we won't move and do nothing about it. Our unwillingness, amen, to get right with God because it's going to cost us something. That means that we're lukewarm. And friend, we are making God sick, amen. <laughs> amen. Notice what this church said about theirself. Verse 17, he said, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods and have need of nothing. Most churches don't even need God today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. They're increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest thou not that thou art wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked? I want to say to you, friend, hey, God, God looked at this church and he saw their works. Verse 15, he said, I know thy works. God knows our work. He knows Victory Baptist Church. He knows what we're doing and what we're not doing. He knows Emmanuel Baptist Church, what you're doing and what you're not doing. He knows every member, the pastor, amen, the pastor's family. He knows every member of the church, amen. If we're sitting on the stool or do nothing, one man said this, hey, if we expect to go to heaven and reap rewards, we better get to work. If you, if you go to heaven, you don't get rewards. Amen. It's because you did nothing. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. What's well, amazing how, how, how we look at ourselves, chief, and then it's another way how God looks at us. Right. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Boy, God takes inspection of his church, amen. It's amazing how down through the years other people have seen my children and seen their faults and failures and they think their children are angels. Yeah, yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, right. God saw the works of this church. I want to tell you, friend, he, he sees what you're doing and what you're not doing. Sure. Not only does he see our works, Brother Doug, but he sees our wretchedness in verse number 17. Boy, Jordan, he sees our wretchedness. Boy, he sees right through us, friend. David said in Psalms 139, he said, Lord, thou knowest my uprising and my down sitting, and thou seest my thoughts afar off. Amen. God knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. What's well, a very scary thing in it? 
And I think I've said this here before, and we're getting ready to put in a projector screen and all down at the church. But I'll tell you, wouldn't it be amazing to the people that are here tonight? Hey, friend, what if Brother Doug let down the screen? And, and what if, amen, uh, Randy, what if uh, God, amen, somehow or another could, right, could project the thoughts that's going through your right mind and right, your mind right now and put them up on the screen for everybody to see them? Would you want your thoughts to be seen? You would, you would, it'd knock you in the next week if you knew what people were thinking right this second. God knows. Well, that's, that's the scary thing, isn't it? Put our thoughts up there. Why well, don't like that person over? I can't stand that. I wish that preacher shut up. Well, think about that, friend. I mean, God sees, Brother Doug, he sees right through that. He sees that, amen. Hey, if you're sitting here tonight and you're lost and you're not saved, hey, God knows that. You can act like you're saved. God knows, amen, your wretchedness. Hey, if you're here tonight and you're a backslid church member, you're not right with God. I want to tell you, God sees that and he knows that, amen. He looks right through our fickleness, friend. Amen. God sees our works. He sees our wretchedness. Now I want to say this in verse number 20. I see God wanting in. Look at verse 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now he's talking to his church. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. But Doug, God couldn't even get inside of his own church. God couldn't finish the work. Brother Bob, what he was wanting to do because that church, God had blessed them so much they didn't need God anymore. Wow. Amen. Yeah, right. yep. I won't say this. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll never get through all this, but I won't say this right here. I had a couple in my church one time and, and a man and his wife. He, he opened up an air-conditioned business, a heating and air conditioned business. I won't tell you, son, he was making money hand over fist. I don't tell you, there's nothing wrong making money. I wish more people would work. America's deficit wouldn't be so high. <laughs> Instead of writing handouts, amen. But I don't tell you, he got to working. You know what he did? He started missing church on Wednesday nights. Preacher, I can't come. I got to work on this, and I got to do this. And then it wasn't too long, Brother Doug, and I know you've seen this. You've pastored long enough. You have too, brother. Wasn't too long. Well, I can't come Sunday, preacher. I got to go do this. I got to put this unit in and do that. Then it wasn't for too much long. Jordan, he got slap out of church. Then he got hooked on these little old pills that you had to pop, amen, to keep you awake 12 or 14 hours a day because he was making so much money. And that money, instead of God being his God, that money become his God. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is what? The root of all evil. Not money itself, but the love of money. When you love money more than you love God, you're in trouble, friend. I'll tell you what he did. I seen him in a little old store. About It's probably about six months before he died. He was about 55 years old. And about six months before he died, and, and I called him, and he was, and you know, I just went in to buy, pay for some gas and get me a drink, Brother Doug, and there he was, he was buying some stuff he shouldn't be buying. He shouldn't have bought, and the preacher walked in. Why try to hide it from the preacher when God sees it? I'm not your judge, amen. I mean, I've got to answer for the stuff I do. Thank God I don't have to answer, amen, Peter, for everybody else. Somebody say amen. I'd be bald-headed like Lawrence if I had to answer for everybody. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, after I seen him that day, Doug, when I seen him, it was the last time I seen him, got a phone call going down the road, and somebody called me and called his name and said, said, he's dead. Now, don't you listen to what I'm telling you, making money hand over fist. I mean, I'm telling you, son, new cars, everything, put God, kick God to the curb, I mean, I mean, had they had everything else but the thing they needed was God. I went to his house, went up there to sleep. I mean, ain't less than a mile from a church. Went up to his house, and heard said his wife and his kids sitting there in the mobile home. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, unto God, didn't even have tissue paper in the house. 
I'm going to tell you, the devil took him for a ride, friend. And we was talking about this, Sister Ford Church. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay, and it'll cost you more than you're willing to pay. Preached his funeral now. I went, church, got a little credit card. I went to the store, got him some tissue, got him some bread, got him some groceries. Brought it back. I want to tell you, it saddened my heart, boy. I mean, it, it saddened my heart to preach his funeral. Six months later, guess whose funeral I was preaching next? His wife. In their 50s. You say, what happened to them, preacher? They didn't finish right. They got started good. Well, they got saved and got in church. Brother Bob got on fire for God. Hey, man, they was living for God. Fat, I mean, doing good. And I'll tell you, he opened up a business. Boy, he started that business become more important to him than God. That business got more important to him than his local church. Are y'all listening to me? And I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody in here tonight. I don't know who you are. Hey, man, the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. Son preached his wife's funeral six months later. Got two kids now that don't have parents. You know why? Because they didn't finish right. You say, what happened to them? They turned their back on God. Now, I want to tell you what, turning your back on God is never going to end in a good result. It's never going to be pretty, amen, we turn our back on God. God was wanting in his church and couldn't even get in. Not only are we to end your hardness, we're to end your headaches. I want to say this to you, friend. That wretchedness, before I hit this next point, God does not deal with symptoms. God deals with sin. He don't deal with symptoms. <laughs> when God diagnoses you, amen, you walk into Dr. Jesus, hey, the Holy Ghost ain't going to lie to you. You know what he's going to do? He's going to get right to the root of the problem. If you're sitting here tonight, hey, God's not going to tell you what's wrong with Chief. He's not going to tell you what's wrong with Preacher Greg or Clint. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost is going to do. He's going to search you, and he's going to tell you, Rod, what's wrong with you. He ain't going to deal with them symptoms. I've heard people say, well, I went to the doctor and boy, they told me this or told me that. I didn't like what he said or she said. Let me tell you, friend, if I go to the doctor and pay $100, if you walk in the doctor's office, it's going to be $100. And more, more likely it's going to be that. I had one man in church. He said, I ain't going to the doctor no more. He said, they'll put me on some more medicine. <laughs> Amen. But I don't want to, I don't want to pay a doctor a $100 bill to lie to me. Yeah, right. I want him to tell me the truth if I got a malignancy in my body or got something growing in my body that don't need to be there, I, James, I want it to be diagnosed. I want it to be cut out or something done to it. Amen. I want him to tell me the truth. I'll tell you, when I come to the house of God, I don't want some, amen, a little dish rag preacher standing up there, amen, preaching every Sunday, God loves me. And God does love you. But I want a preacher to get up there, have a backbone like a saw log, amen, and tell it like it is. If it her lips a devil, amen. Hey, this preacher truth to you. We don't need lies. We've seen the results of what lies can do. What we need to do, we need the truth. Amen. One of them old preachers said we need truth with fire on it. Amen. Not only endure hardness, endure headaches, but notice this, 2 Timothy chapter 4, look at verse number 3. I like what he said here. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Amen. Endure hardness, endure headaches. But I want to say this, we ought to endure sound doctrine. I want to tell you, and I know you do, and I know you love Brother Doug missing that, but you better thank God that you've got a preacher that will tell you the God's truth. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel or a used dip of snuff. Amen. For a preacher, he'll never preach in my pulpit. Amen. If he comes for money. Amen. If he comes in telling a bunch of lies, I want a preacher to come in and preach to my people the gospel. 
We need the truth, amen. That's what's going to help us finish. Today, people, they, want him, they don't want to hear the word. You know why? Because they got itching ears. Amen. Got this Joel Osteen mentality. Somebody say amen. Son, I'd smile too and put stuff on my hair and make up and everything else if I could fly around in jets. Somebody say amen. <laughs> It'd be a wonderful day every day if I was being there. Amen. I thought about Doug hitting playing that lottery up there, you know, right above the never bought a lottery ticket. I said, this sure as I bought it, I'd win. I had to resign the church. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Billion dollar, that's a lot of money, man. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen or not. But you know what? People have itching ears. They won't come to a church like this. You know why? Because they're going to get the truth. You're going to have a man of God that's going to get up and he's going to preach a Bible to you. He ain't going to tickle your ears. Thank God for a real preacher. Amen? They'll have itching ears. Then they'll have isolated ears. Verse 4, they'll turn their ears away from the truth. You know what they do? They just stop their ears up. I guarantee you there could be some people sitting here in the church tonight. You're listening, but you're not hearing. Are y'all hearing me? You're hearing the Word of God, but you ain't listening to it. Let it sink down inside you and let the truth change you. If you hear the truth, you're going to walk out of here different and let Brother Ray let it work in your heart. It's going to change you the truth. Amen. Jesus said in John 8, shall set you free. Amen. 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 People have itching ears. They have isolated ears. They don't want the truth. Then they'll have elusive ears. Paul said they'll turn unto fables. Most churches today, amen, hey, they're not true churches. They come in, amen, I mean, they, they church all around. I'm sure they're here and they're down home. They were in America, amen, they've got black lights and rock and roll music, got fog coming from the stadium, you know, from the platform, amen. I mean, you come in, they got a rock and roll band going. I mean, you know, I mean, some, we, you know, back before I got saved, we used to listen to Eagles and, you know, groups like that. You could understand what they're saying. <laughs> I mean, church now, amen, they got groups up there, they'll play all kind of, I mean, just ungodly music, amen. Hey, people go to churches like that, you know why? Because there's no Holy Ghost and there's no conviction. People don't want to be confronted with their sins. They don't want to be reproved and they don't want to be rebuked. They don't want to be told when they're wrong. Like one little old boy one time, he got tired, Brother Phil, of his mom and daddy telling him what to do. He said, I'm tired of you telling me when to come in. I'm tired of you telling me what to eat. He said, I'm going to join the Marines. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you something, friend. You're always going to have somebody telling you what to do. You've been saved, God. Amen. He ought to be the one telling you what to do every day of your life. Where he leads, I'll follow. And whatever he feeds, I'll swallow. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> endure hardness. Endure uh, headaches. Amen. Endure sound doctrine. Now, I'll tell you what, I like a variety of preaching. We was talking about this preacher the other day. I mean, I like, I like you know, banana pudding. And I, I do, I love it. Somebody may want to thank the Lord for that, amen. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to eat it 365 days a year. Right. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, I like English peas, amen. You don't say in a variety. I don't tell you, the Bible, when you got the Bible preached to you, hey, sometime you'll hear about Daniel in the lion's den. Sometime you'll hear about Jonah in the well, amen. Hey, but I don't tell you, other times you'll hear, uh, amen, stuff that's going to tear your hide up. That's why I, why I didn't need to hear that day. Why, are you not living right? Are you not living godly? I'm going to tell you, preacher can't preach hard enough for me, friend. That don't mean I'm perfect. Amen, I'm far from it, but he can't preach hard enough for me. I let the Holy Ghost put a magnifying glass on my heart and say, Lord, if I'm wrong, amen, I'm going to be the first one to get it right. Amen. Endure sound doctrine. People don't want to hear, heed the word. Uh, friend, John chapter 10, verse 12 and 13, Jesus talks about a hireling, amen, that don't care for the sheep. Me and Doug was talking about this. I told him this. A hireling is for hire. 
Amen? When are we going to decide? When are we going to decide to finish? Let me just give you this. I'm going to tell you this. We're going to decide to finish whenever we see a work that's half done. He said the time will come and the time has come when they'll not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall heat to themselves teachers having itching ears they shall turn away from the truth you know when we're going to decide to finish amen whenever we see a work that's half done you know what makes me want to stand more firm on the word of God what makes me want to preach amen is to see these bunch of compromisers I don't think we ought to be mean to people. We ought to love people, amen. But I want to tell you, if you love somebody, you'll be honest with them. If you love somebody, you'll be honest with them. Tell me the truth, friend. If there's something wrong in my life or my family or whoever, amen. Hey, if my kids have been guilty before the past and stuff, amen. Hey, don't hide it up just because it's your children. Don't cover it up. You try to cover sin up, God will uncover it. Proverbs 28, 13. And I'll tell you, if you uncover that sin, God will cover it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We see a work that's half done. Hey, everybody wants to enjoy and not endure. Amen. The church, hey, we become keepers of aquarium rather than fishers of men. I'm afraid pastors, amen, I mean, listen, I, I just about get tired sometime, amen, Brother Doug, on Monday morning, I sit there, you know, calling people that, that lay out on Sunday. <laughs> My wife told me, she said, you ought to just quit doing that. <laughs> Maybe I'll start listening to her. <laughs> amen. I had to call them big Christians to come to church. Yeah, right. Good. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you know, Hebrews 10, 25, is that not still in the Bible? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yeah. That not still in the Bible? Yeah. First Corinthians four two, moreover is required in stewards what? That a man be found faithful. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoning the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, what? In the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, listen, we're not just working for ourselves. We're working for God. Amen. I'm not going to be accountable to people. I'm going to be accountable to the Almighty. Amen. I mean, face 40 people shows up Sunday. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach. Amen. If 400 shows up, I'm still going to preach. Amen. If four shows up, Doug, I'm still going to preach. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm going to be accountable to the Father. Amen. 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 Most Christians, amen, are satisfied in their backslidden condition. It's a spit in the face of an almighty God if we know we've got sin in our life and we won't confess it and turn from it. We're satisfied when our sins, we've done draw the line in the sand and said, Lord, we're not going to finish and you can't finish right with sin in your life. Psalm 66, 18, David said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. I've got down, Brother Doug, Clint, try to pray for people before and the Holy Ghost said, Boy, that ain't right right there. <laughs> yeah. And before you can hook up right, preacher, amen, you got to get right with God and sometimes you got to go to people and get it right. Yeah, right. I'll tell you, that's humiliating. Yeah. One man said this, If it embarrasses you, it glorifies God. If it embarrasses the flesh, it glorifies the Father. We need to get ourselves out of the way, friend. Amen. There's a harvest. Matthew 9, there's a harvest out there to gather. There's no laborers in the field. We need to pray you therefore that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers out into the field. Amen. I want to say this. We're going to finish whenever we see a work that's half done and turn to John chapter 4. And I'll just I'll leave off right here. But I want to tell you, friend, you know when we're going to decide to finish? It's whenever we see a worship that's half dead. You know the story well, and I've been preaching through this on Wednesday nights out of John chapter 4 about this Samaritan woman. They were half breeds. Nobody was supposed to have anything to do with them, especially the Jews. And I'll tell you, Jesus went to her, amen, in daylight, was seen with her in daylight. <laughs> 
You know what Jesus does in John chapter 3? He, he broke down religious barriers. Amen. Oh, Nicodemus, Pharisee, ruler of the Jews, rich man, knew the law backwards, sideways, everywhere. I'll tell you, Jesus looked at him, Peter, and he said, you must be born again. He said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time? He mistook the spiritual birth for the physical birth. And Jesus said, marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Amen. Hey, if you're here tonight and you've never been saved, ye must be born again. Amen. Must be born again. Then he come to chapter 4 and he said, I must needs go through Samaria. Not only does Jesus break down religious barriers, but I'm going to tell you, he breaks down social barriers. But I'm going to tell you what God's been dealing with me. I'm, I'm about through, I'm, I'm promise you. I'm going to tell you, Doug, what God's been dealing my heart about. You know, I, I've been quick sometimes to see people, you know, it's got these earrings and tattoos and red and yellow and purple hair. You know what I'm saying? If they don't look like the way we think they would look. Amen. I want to tell you, this generation's going to hell, friend. They're going to hell with their eyes wide open. You know what old Ralph Sexton Jr. said one time? He said, we as independent Baptists are trying to go out in community and try to find independent sinners. We want them to look like we do, smell like we do, dress like we do. You know why a pig wallers in mud? That's his nature. That's what sinners do. They enjoy sin. I was there one time. <laughs> Think about where God brought you from, friend. What hell hold you come out of? What bar did you come out of? Amen. Hey, what religion did you come out of? Where's old Donald? He is here. Amen. Him and his son both got saved out of religion. God will save religious sinners, and he'll save rotten sinners. <laughs> Woo! He'll save rotten sinners. Amen. <laughs> Son, I felt the Holy Ghost on that, amen. <laughs> this woman right here, James, most of us wouldn't let her inside our church. Yeah, right. Jesus went up to her, Brother Doug. He said, went up to her, and Jesus never asked a question to get the answer. <laughs> He's omniscient. He knows all about us. Hey, friend, who's going to teach him? He flung the stars out, amen. <laughs> he hung the world's. Paul said in Hebrews 11, he hung the worlds, were framed by the word of God. Yeah. He walked up to this woman, amen. He said, that, he said, where's your husband? She said, sir, I have no husband. He said, you have well said. He said, you've had five. Son, look like that, about two or three. She'd have stopped. Somebody say amen. <laughs> he said, you've had five husbands. He said, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost showed me. Now, let me just give you this. Son, I, I like this right here. Boy, the disciples had went into town. The Bible said, verse number 8, John 4, for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then they came back from the town from buying meat, Jordan, and they saw Jesus talking to this woman. Master, what are you doing talking with this woman? Right. Well, I'm going to tell you what God showed me, Brother Doug, right here. What hypocrites. They'd go into town and fill their belly with them Samaritans' meat and wouldn't even give them the gospel. Wow. Uh -oh. wow. Yeah. Hypocrites. They was more worried about filling their belly than they was about filling heaven. Yeah, look at that. Good. Yeah. Good, brother. Son, the Holy Ghost showed me that evening. Lord, you hungry. I'll tell you what the Lord was hungry for. He was hungry. His meat was to do the will of the Father. He was hungry for the will of the Father to be done. He wasn't trying to fill his belly. He was trying to fill heaven with sinners. <laughs> you know what, amen, our commission is? Matthew 28, go you into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. One man said this, the great commission is out of commission in most places. I, I'm telling you, I got a lot more here. Are you going to finish right? Let me just read this. I found this day. I didn't even know I brought it in my notes. Worshiping the speakers. Listen to this right here. Said a visiting minister was substituting for the famed pastor Henry Ward Beecher. 
A large audience had assembled to hear the popular pastor at the appointed hour the visiting minister entered the pulpit. Learning that Beecher was not to preach, several began to move toward the front door. <laughs> the, visiting member, the visiting minister shouted out and said, All who have come here to church today to worship Henry Ward Beecher may now withdraw from the church. All who have come to worship Jesus Christ, keep your seats. No one left. Son, you, you'll be surprised, amen, across America today that people that are preacher worshipers. I mean, I, I listen, I love preachers. I'll tell you, it breaks my heart sometimes we'll, we'll have church and have revival at our church. You know, I'm, I'm not the best preacher. I just, do, I just do the best I can. I just do the best I can. And Brother Doug, I'll preach and prepare, you know, and preach, and Sunday won't come back on Sunday night. But I'll have a vision speaker in, an evangelist, and you know what they'll do? They'll show up on Sunday night. You know what they're telling you? Preacher, we, we really, we just really, we love to hear him preach, but we don't really like to hear you preach. And what would you think if your wife cooked all day, Bob, if Sonny cooked all day, if she's in there cooking meatloaf or chicken or steak, green beans, macaroni, nana pudding, she cooked all day long, and boy, you come home and you said, I'm not going to eat that. I'm going to go up here at McDonald's and get two cheeseburgers. <laughs> she probably wouldn't cook no more. I couldn't blame her. When are we going to decide to finish, church? Let's all stand. Sister, you come. Brother Doug, you come. When are we going to decide to finish?